What's going on everybody, Peyton Smith here and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be diving right in and showing you how to successfully migrate your website over to Webflow. We're gonna be breaking this down into 11 actionable steps that you can follow step by step to make sure that you don't lose any traffic in your migration, to make sure that you keep your clients happy. And also at the end of this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a spreadsheet that is going to give you a step-by-step -step checklist that you can follow every time you migrate a site to make sure that you do so successfully. So stick around if you wanna download that spreadsheet and without further ado, let's dive right into it. So before we jump into our 11 steps, I wanna talk about what makes for a successful migration. This isn't just something that you can kinda of just roll out random stuff and throw in a couple of redirects and you're good to go, right? This is something that is very precise and needs to be very organized and also very thorough. So you need to make sure that you're going through every single step and that you don't miss anything because you never know when a missed redirect or a missed page or a snippet of content can cost you traffic and can cost your clients sales and revenue. So we need to make sure that not only are we organized and thorough, but that we're really realistic about the expectations that we set with ourselves and with our clients. And the reality of this is when we migrate over to Webflow or to any other platform, there is a very good chance that you're going to see a slight decrease in traffic for the first month or two. This is just reality. However, if we do this thing properly, most of the time you're going to see a huge uptick in traffic after that momentary decrease. And so be very realistic, especially if you're doing this for a client, and make sure that they understand that because the last thing that you want to do is set the wrong expectations. And we're gonna talk about that later in this video. The next thing that you're going to need to do is be really transparent with those clients. And then finally, you wanna make sure that you have a really great process, which I'm going to be handing you in this video. And with this checklist, you're not going to get this wrong. You're gonna be able to knock it out of the park every single time. So the first step to all of this is setting expectations. And so I'm assuming at this point that you are doing this migration for either a client or an employer, your boss, whoever it is. And regardless of your situation, even if it's your own website, you need to make sure to set proper expectations. One of the most common questions that you're going to get asked is, will migrating mess up my Google ranking? And the short answer is yes, it's going to mess it up probably for at least a month or two. And so if you set this expectation and let them know that, yes, we might see a small dip, but if we do things correctly, after two to three months, we're going to see not only a recovery in our traffic, but we can certainly set ourselves up to see a huge increase. And so set expectations and let them know what to expect. Otherwise, they're going to be super frustrated when after your migration, they take a hit in their traffic and they're going to assume that you did something wrong. Now, I think it's important to understand that a migration to any platform is, is going to cause these types of dips. This isn't just a Webflow thing. It doesn't matter if you're migrating to WordPress or Wix or anywhere else. When you're setting expectations, it's probably a great time to share case studies of other clients that you've helped successfully migrate their sites to Webflow. Not only will this instill confidence, but it's going to make your clients be a little bit more patient with you when sitting around waiting for that traffic to recover. So step number two is benchmarking your current site. Now this is gonna be really important to track not only those dips in traffic, but also the recovery and the progress that you make in traffic after the fact. So what we wanna do is take a note of the current state of the website, which will serve as a benchmark moving forward. I love doing this because anytime a client comes to you and says, hey, what the heck, we've seen a huge decrease in traffic, you can show them and say, yeah, actually we only had about a 5% decrease, which while I acknowledge this is, you know, this is important, it's not going to kill us and we will recover. If you don't set this benchmark, you're going to have no clue what to say. And if the client feels like they lost traffic, even if they didn't, you've got no sort of proof or, or any way to prove that, um, you know, this is where we start and this is where we are currently. So the three things that you're going to want to do is run a site audit to check the website's current health. This is something that you can do in any um, SEO software, whether it's Ahrefs or SEMrush. And I've got a video right here that you can watch if you wanna learn more about using these softwares to run these audits and checks. The second thing you wanna do is set up position tracking to monitor the website's current rankings. And so again, in any software, you're going to be able to plug in the site and see exactly what keywords it's ranking for and in what position it's ranking. 
And again, this is going to give you a great, great baseline. The third thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take note of the current traffic the website is receiving. Once again, this can be pulled from anywhere from Google Analytics to a SEMrush or an Ahrefs type tool. Um, a lot of times your clients are also going to have access to this from their analytics or search console. So make sure that you take note of that before you start. Step three is getting organized. And this is where the spreadsheet and the tools that I'm gonna share with you are gonna come into play. Because what you're gonna to wanna to do is find the sitemap to the domain and make sure that you have all of the different pages and links um, so you know exactly what you need to do as far as redirects um, or just to make sure that no pages are forgotten on the new site. The tool that's attached to the second tab of the spreadsheet that you can download at the end of this video is going to have a really simple tool that you can plug in the sitemap URL and it's going to automatically extract all of those links. Now keep in mind that you need to make sure that a sitemap has been produced and so if you don't know how to do that, we'll probably drop a link down below in this video just to help you along in that process. After that, you're gonna to wanna to use a backlink analytics tool to take note of the pages on your site that have backlinks. It's really, really important, and I can't stress this enough, it's super important to not lose any good backlinks during this process. And so you can see that in a tool, again, like Ahrefs or SEMrush, you can use this backlink search tool just to make sure that you are accounting for all of those links. Make sure that any of these links that are linked to specific pages of your site that you're either matching those page links or you at least have redirects, that's going to help make sure that those backlinks don't get disconnected and lost. You're gonna to wanna to use tools like Google Analytics and Search Console to see which pages have already been indexed by Google and which ones are receiving a good amount of traffic. These are typically the ones that you're gonna to wanna to have top priority and make sure that you're preserving those pages when it comes to page titles, meta descriptions, um, page content images, you wanna make sure that those pages don't change too drastically because that could hurt the traffic coming to those pages. Finally, just make sure that you take note of which pages and URLs you want to keep, which ones you want to delete, and which ones you want to change. Again, you can use the spreadsheet provided at the end of this video to organize um, your game plan and to make sure that you don't forget any pages. Now, one thing that I do want to mention is a lot of times in a migration, your clients are going to say, oh, we just want like a you know, to clean house and get rid of tons of pages and tons of links. And one thing that you wanna keep in mind is if you're getting rid of a ton of indexed pages, you're inevitably going to lose traffic. Number one, because a lot of those pages could be getting good traffic already. And number two, Google's not going to like waking up in the morning and seeing that all of a sudden your site lost 50% of its index pages. And so make sure that you're careful about the ones that you delete and remove. And it may even be smart to maintain a couple of those and slowly drop those off and redirect them over time rather than having one huge hit all on the same day. The next thing that you wanna do is gather content. So gather and organize all the content for the new website, whether that's copy, images, videos, anything else, make sure that nothing gets left behind. One thing that my team likes to do is create a Google Drive folder to keep everything super organized within their own folders. This is something that the client can access and add to, and it's a really great way to make sure that nothing gets left behind. If you're coming from a WordPress website, you can use a plugin like WP CSV to export content as a CSV. And this is really easy to upload into your Webflow CMS. That way you don't have to manually copy and paste every single bit of content over. Again, we wanna make this process as seamless as possible. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take care of on-page SEO. So when you're rebuilding the site in Webflow, make sure to take care of your on-page SEO. Oftentimes, the quick wins come from tidying up your on-page SEO if there were any previous errors. And so earlier in this video, we talked about benchmarking the site and running your health audits. And a lot of times when you migrate a site, you're gonna notice that there are a ton of on-page errors. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, with on-page errors. Essentially, this has to do with all of these things listed below. Title tags, meta descriptions, open graph images, URLs, missing heading tags, um, links, file names, all of these different things can throw errors if they're not set up correctly. And this is another place where you're gonna wanna use an SEO tool like SEMrush 
to run the audit and it's going to tell you exactly what issues the site has. And again, you might as well make these updates while you're building the new site because any sort of dip in traffic that you could experience could potentially be more quickly recovered because your site is so much healthier and you've gotten rid of so many of these on-page errors. So make sure that you're constantly running these audits and setting up the site properly because your clients are going to be much, much happier knowing that even if you did have a slight drop in traffic, that you can show them these audits and show them how much progress you've made when it comes to the health of your website. So step number six is setting up your 301 redirects. And this is obviously a super important step. So what you're gonna wanna do is use the URL list that you previously made to set up your 301 redirects. And so to strip this down to its, you know, its most simple explanation, every single page of a website has a link, right? If you go to a page of a, of a website, you can go up in the search tab and you can copy and paste that link and what you need to be aware of is that that link can sometimes change when you're migrating a website. Now, of course, you wanna keep as many of the links the same as you can, but there are a couple limitations within Webflow where you can not um, create slugs that have multiple levels. Um, the CMS collections are going to have very specifically named um, slugs. And so be aware that if there is ever a discrepancy between the old link and the new link, you have to make sure to plug in that redirect within the settings of your Webflow website. Now, before you do this, you're going to have to connect a hosting plan so you can set up these redirects. And I'm going to link a video down in the description that's gonna show you step-by-step -step how to set those 301 redirects and how to maintain your SEO ranking. So again, going back to one of the past um, steps that we talked about, you need to be ultra organized and super, super thorough with this process. You don't wanna leave any pages left behind. So once you've migrated and once you've gotten all of the links updated, your on-page edits done, you're gonna wanna check for new site errors. So again, go to SEMrush or Ahrefs or whatever SEO tool you're using and run a site audit on the subdomain to check for any errors so you can tidy these up before you officially connect to a domain and launch. Then you can go through and manually review your website. Hey, I just wanted to take a quick pause here. If you guys are finding any value in this video, please be sure to like the video. It really helps me out. And I would love for you to subscribe as well if this is the type of content that you're interested in. Thanks so much. Let's get back into it. The next step is connecting your Google Analytics to Webflow, and I don't wanna to waste too much time on this, so I have put a link down below to Webflow University that explains more about how to connect this and what it's going to do for you during this migration process. Step nine, you're gonna connect your domain. Finally, you're gonna launch the site and then take a second to celebrate, right? This is a awesome thing that you've been able to accomplish. You've had a successful migration, your clients are happy, and you can finally take a breather. Now, if you have any questions on how to connect a domain, again, I've dropped a link to Webflow University down below, but if you've gotten to this point successfully, congratulations. But be aware that there's still a little bit more to do. The next step is you're going to wanna to submit a sitemap to Google Search Console. This is going to allow Google to resubmit your sitemap and re-index any pages that could have changed links or content. This is a great way to notify Google that, hey, our website changed, we want you to take note of that. And also this is going to be a great opportunity to kind of start that process of, you know, Google taking into account all the changes you made, probably to see a slight decrease in traffic, but then so you can quickly get back to that uptick in traffic um, to where your clients are gonna be thrilled. And the final and usually the most enjoyable step is reviewing your benchmark. Again, we set a benchmark at the start for a reason because it's going to give you a baseline in order to track your progress after a migration. Now, obviously you're going to want to set the expectations that there is going to be a slight decrease in traffic. Usually month three to four is the best time to check back in with your client and say, hey, look how high our traffic has soared ever since our migration. This is when you're going to catch them at their happiest. And usually this is the best time to get a review or a testimonial or some sort of case study back from them because again, it's going to help you sell people on future migrations. So we've gone through steps one through 11. We've talked about all of the big steps that you need to take in order to have a successful migration. So now what I wanna talk about is this free spreadsheet 
that we have built and are providing. Again, we've talked a little bit about what it's going to do for you. Number one, it's going to give you the ability to plug in a sitemap and extract all of the URLs from that website. It does this all right within this Google Sheet. But the other thing that it's going to do is give you a step-by-step migration process that you can follow for every single client. Now, you're going to notice that within this checklist, there are a lot of things that we weren't able to cover in this video. And we're going to be constantly editing and updating this migration checklist in order to add more value, more resources, and to help you through this process. And so if you want to download this, right down below in the description, it's going to be the first link that you find. You're going to be able to click through to my website and download that uh, that spreadsheet and checklist. I hope that it comes in handy for you and it will help you through all of your future migrations. And again, if you found any value in this video, be sure to smash that like button down below. Number one, because it makes me feel good. And number two, it helps me know what type of content you guys are liking. So thanks so much for watching the video and we will catch you in the next one.